Miami's soaring skyscrapers pierce the sky, embodying human ambition and architectural marvels, while its luxury condos and bustling streets promise a life of glamour and prosperity. Yet beneath this shimmering facade lies a grave and increasingly alarming reality. Miami is sinking. The very ground upon which these billion-dollar structures stand is slowly giving way, compromised by the city's unique geology, rising sea levels, and excessive construction. The situation is not hypothetical. It is a reality unfolding in Miami today. What will happen when the weight of these skyscrapers become too much for the Earth to bear? From the tragic collapse of the Champlain Towers south to unsettling scientific studies, the evidence of the sinking crisis is undeniable. Will Miami find a way to adapt, or will it succumb to the forces beneath its feet? Join us today as we delve into Miami's $100 billion skyscrapers that are now sinking. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video, as it's the best way to support this channel. Over the past few decades, Miami has undergone a remarkable transformation, evolving from a modest coastal city to a global hub for tourism, finance, and real estate. The skyline, adorned with gleaming skyscrapers, is a hallmark of this transformation. Alongside other U.S. cities, Miami has seen an increase in skyscrapers set for its urban areas and coastline, mostly in the city's Brickell neighborhood, Miami Beach, and the Design District. Notably, several of these skyscrapers are the first residential or mixed-use developments from fashion brands such as Dolce & Gabbana and automotive brands, including Bentley and Mercedes-Benz. Fueled by an influx of domestic and international investment, Miami's real estate market has thrived, Wealthy individuals from around the world have purchased luxury apartments in these high-rises, transforming the city into a playground for the rich. However, this rapid urbanization has come at a cost. The construction of these skyscrapers often overlooks the unique environmental challenges posed by Miami's geographical location. Recent studies point to the unsettling reality that some of Miami's skyscrapers are sinking. Researchers identified parts of Miami Beach and other areas experiencing subsidence at rates of up to 3 mm per year. While these rates may seem negligible, they are significant when compounded over decades, particularly for structures that were not designed to accommodate such shifts. Conducted by researchers at the University of Miami, a recent study looked at skyscrapers in the strip of coastal islands off mainland Florida in population centers including Miami Beach, Surfside, Ball Harbor, and Sunny Isles Beach. It examined many large buildings built on the Strip, half of which were built in 2014 and after, and found that 35 had been affected by sinking or subsidence of between 2 to 8 centimeters. Skyscrapers such as the 641-foot-tall Porsche Design Tower is among the 35 buildings in the barrier islands of Miami that have sunk 8 centimeters or more since 2016. Opened in 2014, Porsche Design Tower was the first residence branded by an automaker. In the building, the footballer Leo Messi bought an apartment to live with his family. It features a high-tech car elevator, setting the stage for other luxury buildings, like the 818-foot-tall Aston Martin skyscraper in the vicinity. But Porsche Design Tower sank 10 centimeters between 2017 and 2021. For now, experts clarify that there is no danger of the Porsche Design Tower collapsing, as it does not have structural issues, but geologists will continue to monitor it. Other properties that have sunk several centimeters include the Ritz-Carlton Residences, the two Trump Towers, Regalia, and Surf Club Towers. Some of the structures recorded in the study where sinking was observed were only 18 meters tall. Rates of sinking were different across the different towers, from slow exponential to fast exponential, and many experienced a sudden onset of sinking around 2018, even for some structures completed more than 30 years ago. So what exactly is causing this subsidence? To start with Miami is built on a foundation of porous limestone, a material that is both a blessing and a curse. 
While limestone is stable enough to support structures under normal conditions, it is highly susceptible to erosion and water intrusion. The city's proximity to the ocean exacerbates this vulnerability, as salt water can seep into the limestone, gradually weakening its structural integrity. Moreover, Miami's elevation is perilously low, with much of the city resting only a few feet above sea level. This makes it especially prone to flooding even during minor storms or high tides. Therefore, factors such as daily tidal movements and cracking limestone beneath the surface may contribute to the gradual sinking over time. As sea levels continue to rise, the pressure on Miami's geological foundation is intensifying, threatening the stability of its skyscrapers. Researchers also found that this subsidence is related to ongoing construction activities. The research was conducted over a period of seven years using a monitoring device called Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar, a sensitive device that can measure changes in geology as little as a millimeter that is often used for structural engineering. The reasons given for the sinking were the inconsistent layers of limestone and natural groundwater movements, with the study suggesting that much of the observed sinking occurs due to the shifting of sand grains triggered by the weight of the high-rises and the vibrations from construction. In terms of long-term structural damage, the main problem for buildings is when parts of the ground underneath and around buildings sink at uneven rates. The study concluded that there are no indications that the subsidence will come to a stop anytime soon. The study also noted that construction could trigger the sinking of a nearby structure, such as the documented sinking of the site of an in-progress Bentley skyscraper due to the construction of the nearby Turnberry Ocean Club skyscraper. This study follows the 2021 collapse of Champlain South Condominium Tower in Surfside, which killed 98 people. This accident served as a tragic wake-up call. While the exact cause of the collapse remains a topic of investigation, subsidence and the building's proximity to water are considered contributing factors. This disaster has drawn attention to the vulnerabilities of older buildings and raised concerns about the long-term stability of newer, taller skyscrapers. Following the collapse, Zaha Hadid Architects released designs for a 12-story luxury condominium on the Champlain Tower site. Despite the sinking crisis, Construction continues in Miami on massive structures. Recently, architecture studio Arquitectonica completed the 48-story five-park skyscraper in Miami Beach, the tallest in the city. Kengo Kuma & Associates is currently working on the structure for an 18-story Amman residential tower in Miami Beach. On mainland Miami, which was not covered in the study, there are plans for several massive skyscrapers, Bentley Residences, a joint venture between Seeger Suarez Architects and Desert Development, is the first branded residential project in the U.S. from Bentley. The skyscraper is set to have a car elevator that will transport drivers from ground level to their respective apartments and will also be able to rotate the vehicles to correct their orientation. Set to break ground in 2025, another development is the 1201 Brickle Bay Drive skyscraper which is part of a larger future mixed-use development by Foster and Partners located in the city's Brickell neighborhood. Another skyscraper, 888 Brickell, by Dolce & Gabbana and Studio Sofield is set to rise 1,049 feet high, with completion slated for 2028. One of the largest projects currently under construction in Miami is Mercedes-Benz Places, by SHOP Architects. It will be the first branded skyscraper by the German car brand and will be located in Miami's Brickell neighborhood. Developers are also racing to build another skyscraper. The Waldorf Astoria Miami is set to be the first super tall skyscraper completed in Miami at 1,049 feet high. It is made up of a series of stacked offset cubes meant to be an iconic sculpture that defies the laws of gravity, according to architect Carlos Ott. With all these skyscrapers coming up, the question is no longer whether Miami can afford to address this crisis, but whether they can afford not to. The time to act is now. The crisis of sinking skyscrapers is not unique to Miami. Cities around the globe 
from Manhattan to Shanghai, face a similar fate, highlighting the universal challenges of urbanization in the era of climate change. Manhattan's iconic skyline is slowly pressing into the earth, and in China, home to over half of the world's 100 tallest buildings, the issue is just as pressing, with structures in Shanghai and Guangzhou sinking due to subsidence and waterlogged foundations. These parallels underscore the global nature of this crisis, emphasizing the urgent need for innovative engineering, sustainable urban planning, and international cooperation. What are your thoughts on Miami's skyscrapers sinking? Leave a reply in the comments section. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.